Hello, St. X class of 2024. I hope everyone had a great Easter weekend and that this message finds you and your family uh, doing well, staying safe, and all healthy. My name is Coach Tronzo. I'm the Director of Strength and Conditioning here, and I am looking forward to coaching you uh, for your next four years. Today was supposed to be the start of our incoming freshman program. Uh, Though we're not able to be together, we can all still be uh, one team, one community, one band of brothers. Uh, so today what I'm going to do is I'm going to provide you an at-home training regimen. Okay, All of these exercises you will be able to do uh, at your house, in your backyard, out on the street, um, and and. And these exercises will help you progress in such a way that whenever we are able to get back and all come together, that these will help prepare you for where we want to be. Okay. Um, so in the email that we sent out, okay, there should be a, a PDF of your workout. Okay. And your workout will look something like this. Okay something like that all right now that will be your workout for the first two weeks okay that will be the workout for the first two weeks and before i get into the workout uh, what i want to talk about first is kind of the purpose behind it okay with these workouts the purpose is not to uh, make you puke the purpose is not to uh, make you so sore that you can't walk the next day. All right, for these first couple of weeks, we're kind of, you know, we we're going to call this kind of an acclimation period, okay? Getting used to training. How I program this is, is ABCs and one, two, threes of, uh, of strength and conditioning, of training, okay? So some of you all may have been to uh, different private facilities or have worked out with mom or dad before. All right. So for the purposes of our freshman training, and we would do this no matter if you were here with us or uh, at your house. Okay. As I always program uh, under the presumption that you do not have any experience in training. Okay. So whether you've been working out for three years uh, with a trainer or whether you haven't done anything at all, okay, we're all going to start off uh, together, okay? So the, the purpose really behind uh, our incoming freshman program is to kind of teach you, uh, you know, teach you how to control and be aware uh, of your body, okay? So raising your uh, body awareness, body control, and relative strength, which is your ability uh, to control your own body weight, okay, uh, is the main purposes behind our programs, okay? Uh, so when you bring this sheet, okay, in front of you, I'll go over the breakdown. So if you don't have the sheet in front of you, go ahead and grab it, okay? So this sheet right here will break down and show you every single exercise that we are going to do, okay? So this will be weeks one and two uh, there up at the top, okay? And here will be uh, the instruction telling you that this workout is to be completed four times per week. So it will be the exact same uh, workout as far as this top part is concerned, Okay, and here at the bottom will be our change of direction and agility and conditioning. Okay, so here we have our dynamic warm up. Okay, so warm up exercises that's how you want to begin every single workout. All right, we'll have core work. All right, we'll have body weight strength. So again, you will not need any outside equipment other than just your body weight. Okay, here. We will have a uh, change of direction and agility drills. And then at the bottom to finish your training for that day, we will have conditioning, okay? So uh, now coming up, I'm gonna uh, transition out into the weight room. All right, well, I will break down and show you uh, each of those movements, giving you a couple of coaching cues and things to uh, really focus on and be aware of 
while you're going through your training. We will begin this training session like you should begin any training session with a dynamic warm up. We have five different movements that I have included. You will go through each movement once and then you will wrap back around and go through each movement a second round, okay? So we have five uh, different movements that we will include in our weeks one and two dynamic warm-up, okay? First exercise will be knee hugs, okay? I can do this walking forward, okay? Where I will bring my knee up to my chest, grab with both hands, and pull, okay? When I do that, I wanna make sure my heel stays on the ground and my opposite or down leg, okay? I wanna make sure that that opposite leg, foot stays on the ground, knee staying straight. So I do not wanna come up off of the hip, off of the heel, okay? So I will step, come to balance, grab the knee and pull to the chest. Step, balance, grab, hug. And that will be knee hugs. For that, you have 10 each. Okay, figure four. All right, same concept. Opposite leg stays straight. Heel stays on the ground. Come to balance. Grab under the knee. Grab under the foot. And pull both up simultaneously. Step. Come to balance. Foot, knee. And hug up in, or, uh, simultaneously, rather. Walking quad stretch, again, same concept. Step forward, balance, heel on the ground, knee straight. Same foot, grabbing the, or same hand rather, grabbing the foot, come to balance, and a good forward lean. Okay, one from the side, so I will step, come to balance, same hand, same foot, Knee stays locked, heel down on the ground, and good forward lean. So again, in my intro, I talked about developing body awareness, body control. Coming to balance is one of those components, okay? Do not rush through these movements. It, you know, with, with all of that in mind, slow it down, okay? Don't rush through these things, okay? Come to balance, pull. Come to balance, pull. Step, come to balance, and pull. So working on our overall balance, body control, body awareness, all right, is a key component in building a great athletic foundation. Okay, inchworms, all right, inchworms. So I will start up tall. I will walk my hands out into a press up position. So I wanna get my hips as low to the ground and arch that back as much as possible. Okay, so that will be halfway through. Now I will keep my legs straight so my knees do not bend. I'm gonna walk in on my toes and I'm going to try to walk my toes as close to my hands as I can. And then I will walk back out into a press up, legs straight, walk in on the toes, push those hips as high as I can in the air, okay? And then repeat that, all right? We have eight reps on that one. Final movement, movement number five, will be a straight leg march. So we will do this moving forward, okay? Opposite leg, again, the plant leg stays straight. Heel stays on the ground, and I will kick my leg up, which again, the kicking leg stays nice and straight. Kicking leg to opposite hand. Step, kick. We don't want any gather steps in between. I know sometimes I see we do one kick, we take about three different steps, and then do another one. We don't want any gather steps. So step, kick, step, kick. Now it's very common when I go to do my kicking uh, component of that, that the opposite leg will bend or the heel will come up off of the ground. Really focus on keeping that plant leg down, the heel down on that, keeping that knee 
blocked and then kicking up as high as you can to that opposite hand. So again, we have those five movements. Okay, go through those movements once, come back around and go through those movements a second time and that will be our dynamic warm up for the session. Our next component of the training session is core. Okay, now during this again, we wanna make sure that we're really focused on our spine and we're gonna teach you two things, uh, two terms rather when you talk about doing core work and that is drawing in and bracing. Okay, so for our first exercise, it will be what is called a draw in crunch. Okay, so laying down on my back. Okay, most crunches we go and we do like a thousand repetitions. Okay, for this, a small number of reps, but we really want to focus on the pause at the top and what is actually occurring, all right, at our stomach and spine position. So for this, laying on the ground, I'm going to take both hands, reach them straight up in the air. Okay, from this position, knees bent, feet flat on the ground. I do not want to swing at all. I want to make my stomach do the work. So hands up. Okay, when I crunch up, my hands will go straight up to the ceiling, not forward, but they will go straight up to the ceiling. Okay, laying in this position, I'm going to do what is called drawing in. So I'm going to try to take my belly button and pull it and touch my belly button on my spine. Now, when I do that, when I take my belly button and pull it to my spine, okay, that is where you have that crunch action. Now, when I get to the top of my crunch, I'm gonna do what's called bracing. And bracing is when I tighten my stomach. Think about if I'm walking on the beach and there's a bunch of girls around, or if I'm about to get punched or hit in the stomach, what would you do? You would tighten up your stomach. So I'm coming from this position on the ground, I draw in, and then when I get to the top, I'm gonna to hold that position. I'm going to brace, okay, I'm gonna brace for three seconds and then control back down all right next rep draw in brace hold for th three seconds and control back down so that is draw in crunch okay next is a three-way plank series so that is going to be a front plank and then a left and right side plank so starting out in a front plank position okay elbows down feet I'm sure most of you all have done planks before but we want to make sure that we do them correctly okay I will step my feet out on my toes all right and I'm going to do that same action that we just talked about with the draw and crunch I'm going to pull my belly button into my spine okay and then I'm going to brace it okay so I'm going to hold that position there spine nice and flat okay shoulders back and I'm going to hold that position all right when i'm going through this again focus on drawing in that stomach bracing for impact to where if someone came up and kicked you it would be fine and again i want to hold that position while i'm going through there focusing on my drawing in and my bracing okay you can picture like having a basketball sitting on your back okay so if my butt goes up the ball would move forward Okay, I don't want to form a valley that would slide off the back. Okay, and then I don't want to twist my hips or rotate my back because that would force the ball to roll off side to side. Okay, so a flat uh, shelf, a flat table is kind of what you are picturing. All right, so to where if you set that ball right there on the back, it wouldn't roll in either direction. Okay, when we go to our side, all right, when we go to our side, all right, we want to have a good straight line from my elbow to my shoulder to my other shoulder. Okay, head in line with your spine, feet stacked, and I'm picturing of taking my top hip and touching the ceiling with it. I can hold that position. All right, now, if that is very easy for uh, some of you out there, there's a couple of variables that you could change. Okay, I can come in this position. Again, make sure when you do this, your hip does not drop. All right, I can pull my knee into chest and hold, or I could take my legs straight up in the air and hold, okay? So again, when you go to change those positions, 
make sure that your hip does not drop and the only thing that moves is either the knee into the chest or the leg straight up, okay? You will, again, those two exercises, well, uh, four rather, because you got your draw and crunch, front plank, left side, right side, you'll go through those four exercises once, okay? And you'll come back around. All right, we have, I'm sorry, we have three sets, okay? So you will go through once, go through twice, and then go through a third time, okay? Make sure you have a watch on there. A lot of times when it starts getting difficult, your one Mississippi, two Mississippi turns into 17, 18, 19, okay, and it speeds up. So make sure you have uh, some sort of timekeeping device, okay, and don't rely on yourself just to sit there and count. We're now into our body weight strength component. All right, we will have five different movements that again we will go through once come back around twice come back around a third time okay first movement is setting an athletic position okay an athletic position is the base the foundation of really all athletic based movements okay i have a slight bend in the knee hips back back nice and flat okay seems simple enough but from what I've seen over the past seven years, some people, some guys really struggle with not only getting into this position, but holding it, okay? From this position, I can go forward, I can go backward, I can go side to side, okay? So this is your base foundational position for the vast majority of athletic based movements. Okay, looking from the side, again, slight knee bend, hips back, back nice and flat, and all I'm going to do is just hold this position. Okay, next one, a split squat hold. Now I will put one knee on the ground, my other foot will be forward. Okay, when I look, I should be full of 90 degree angles. So my front foot, let me back up to where you can see, my front foot and forward shin should make a 90 degree angle, okay? The floor and my opposite thigh should make a 90 degree angle. My spine, I should be straight up and down, okay? With my head directly in line with my spine. Okay, so that is your setup position. So from there, I could just take my hands on my hips and all I'm going to do is get, draw in that stomach, brace to help me stay stable. So when I come up, I don't want any buckling to come up. All I'm going to do is drive through, if my right foot is forward, I'm gonna drive through the arch of my right foot and I'm gonna bring that knee one inch off the ground. Okay, I'll back up so that you can see. So knee is down, foot on the ground. Okay, and all I'm going to do, again, tighten, drive through that front foot, the arch of that front foot. And I'm just gonna bring that knee one inch off the ground and I'm gonna hold that position. Okay, I will obviously do that with both legs. So right foot forward, then left foot forward, okay? Now reverse lunge. So there, kind of a static movement. Now we're going to uh, do more of a dynamic uh, movement where we're gonna go into a lunge. Okay, so on my lunge, I'm gonna do a reverse lunge. We're gonna break it down or segment it. Okay, so again, this is about body control. Okay, body control. So we wanna slow it down, make sure we're not compensating by speeding things up and going faster to where, oh, I'm falling off balance, so I'm just gonna speed this up. We want to do actually the complete opposite and we wanna slow down the movement, okay? So reverse lunge, again, we could just put hands on the hips. We're gonna segment it where I will step back, come to balance. I will drop straight down, really into the position that we just did on the front squat, or I'm sorry, the split squat and then I will drive up and forward, okay? We might be out of school, but the bells are still going. So that's what that is, okay? So again, on the reverse lunge, okay, I will step back, come to balance, 
drop and hold that knee right off the ground, and then drive forward to my original starting position, okay? And that is reverse lunges, okay? Next movement is going to be a push-up. Now, this will be a push-up, uh, maybe not the one that you are familiar with, okay? Because we are gonna start on the ground. So we are going to lay on the floor, okay? We're gonna lay on the ground. So, I will start down on my stomach. I will start down on my stomach. All right, my elbows want to be in. All right, my toes want to be dug in. So, when I'm going through my push-up movements, okay, and I'm gonna move the camera so you can see me better. All right, when I am going through my push-ups, I wanna make sure that my elbows are not out here. Okay, when I go to strike or punch or push someone, I'm not going to do it out here. Okay, my elbows are going to be tucked into my body, all right, and that's where I'm going to strike, push, defend from. Okay, so when I set up, I want to make sure my elbows are into my side, elbows into the side and not flared out here to the side. Okay, so they want to be tucked into the side of my body, not flared out away from it. Okay. So I'll start from the floor, toes dug in. All right, go back to what we've talked about on our core routine as far as drawing in and bracing. So if I draw in my stomach, brace, dig those toes in, tighten that stomach, brace that stomach, and push up. Control down if you can. Reset, redraw in, rebrace, and push up. Okay? Now, if you are someone who struggles with push-ups, okay, you can elevate your hands. All right, you can elevate your hands. So go to your stairs, all right, go to the stairs in your house, put your feet, all right, on the floor, and put your hands up the stairs, okay? So you'll start on an incline like this. Do the same exercise, start from laying down and push up. Okay, as you get better, you can move your hands down one step. Okay, move your hands down one step until you are nice and flat, okay, on the ground. All right, now a couple things to watch for again when we talk about drawing in and bracing. If I do that correctly, I draw in, I brace, I press up, everything comes up together. What we don't want to do is kind of leave those hips lagging behind to where you push up hips stay lagging, and then you swing your butt up at the very end, okay? Draw in, brace, press up, all in one motion, okay? For many of you out there, that may be very, very simple for you to do, okay? But again, we're focused on the body control, body awareness, so it's, it's less about the upper body strength, it's more about the coordination of upper and lower limbs and uh, drawing in and bracing to where now we're able to move the upper and lower body all in one straight line, okay? Final exercise for our body weight strength rotation is going to be a single leg hip lift, okay? A single leg hip lift. And there's the belt. Okay, so on this, Okay, on this, I'm gonna leave my left leg down. I'm gonna bring my right leg back as far as I can. So I'm really gonna get a good hamstring stretch in that right leg, laying on the floor. Now when I do this, when I do this, I wanna make sure that my heel stays down. Okay, the biggest correction I make is that when guys go to push up off of the floor, they bring their heel up because they wanna do everything with their thigh. We're trying to make our glute and our hamstring work. Okay, so laying there down on the ground, don't arch that back. Okay, just drive through the arch of the foot and raise those hips up as high as you can, and you're gonna hold that position. Take this right leg, try to bring it as far back while you're driving that hip as far up as you can. Okay, you will hold that position. Okay, I'll switch legs here. All right, left leg, bringing that back, bring that toe to the knee, pull that leg back. Right leg's on the floor, pushing through that right heel, gonna drive up, pull that left leg back, drive those hips up, 
and hold that position. Okay. Again, those are our five movements. Okay, with the single leg exercises, you will of course do both legs per round. All right, and we have three rounds of that. Okay, now we'll move on to our uh, change of direction and agility, as well as our conditioning. So I provided two uh, change of direction agility drills for you to do. Many of you may have done these before. Okay, with our uh, agility, uh, change of direction, agility work, and conditioning, okay, you're just going to pick one of each, okay, and then through the week, you will have done these twice, okay, so for each workout, I'm either going to select 5105 or L drill, I will stick with just that movement for that day, Okay, then when I go on to conditioning, I will select one conditioning drill for that day. Okay, four workouts, two agility, two conditionings. Okay, so you're picking one per day of each. All right, it's to where for the week you will have done uh, both drills, both conditionings two times. Okay, so starting out with the 510 5. Okay, this is the pro agility uh, drill, okay, uh, as, as you may have heard it called. All right, so I will start, I will start and finish at the same spot, okay? Each line from my starting position is five yards away, okay? So I will start here, all right? I will sprint to my right, I will touch, okay, all of the touches right now on these cones, on these markers, on these lines, all right, are just with the foot, okay? So no need to reach down at this point in time, just with the foot. So I'll start out moving five to the right. I will come back and pass where I started and go five yards there from my starting position to the left, okay? And then I will sprint back and finish at the same spot that I started from, okay? On this drill, I wanna make sure that I do an even number starting to the right, okay, and to the left, all right? So I wanna make sure that I get the same amount of reps in both directions, okay? L drill, all right, these cones are five yards apart as well. So this is my starting position. I will sprint forward, touch. I will come back to where I started and touch. I will sprint forward again, go around, and then I will come under this cone and I will go all the way around and finish back where I started from, okay? So forward, back, around, inside the cone, and around to finish. Again, just like the L drill, okay, I do a certain amount of reps going to the right. I'll take this cone and move it to where I can do the same thing now uh, going to the left, okay? So those are our two change of direction agility drills. All right, now for our conditioning, we have two. Don't really need to draw those up. They're very simple. Go out, just run a mile, okay? Try to better your time each time you do that, okay? To, to, to run a faster pace, all right? And then we also have a 40-yard dash. So if you don't have anything that will measure, uh, you know, just, just step it off, okay? Take, take big steps, all right? 40 big steps, okay? And mark those off. Now, on these... Okay, on these and the 40 yard dashes, I included a rest time. Okay, so these are not really designed to be um, conditioning per se, more so than they are designed to, um, you know, really help with that max effort, speed, agility, quickness type. Okay, when we start putting our mileage on, when we start. Uh, decreasing the amount of time between, then we'll kind of start getting into more of a conditioning uh, component, okay? So our L drill, our 
uh, 5, 10, 5 in our 40s. We have a minute rest in between each so we can really give each rep a max effort. Okay, the one mile run is just that, so there is no rest time uh, listed. Okay, that will conclude uh, our training regimen for the day. Again, uh, with that workout, okay, you are going to do that four times per week, okay? So the workout that I have given you, uh, that is for weeks one and two. So you will have needed to accumulate eight workouts uh, by the time uh, we come back uh, here in uh, two weeks and re-up to make weeks three and four, okay? Everyone, uh, again, I hope all is well uh, with the family. I hope everything is, is well with the family, your loved ones. Everyone staying safe, staying healthy, okay? Be responsible, be safe uh, out there. And uh, again, I look forward to working with you uh, here for the next four years. Welcome to St. X, class of 2024.